Hello everyone, welcome to the part 4 of our discussion on soil formation and processes. Today I will discuss the soil forming processes, which are the additions and the losses. Let's begin discussing additions. Inputs of material to the soil profile from outside sources are considered additions. Both human activity and natural processes could result in the addition of materials to the soil. And the most obvious addition is the addition of organic matter. As soon as plant life begins to grow in fresh parent material, organic matter begins to accumulate. The dead organisms, plant foliage, roots, and others add organic material to the soil. Most organic matter addition to the surface increase the cation exchange capacity and the nutrients in the soil, which also increase plant nutrient availability. Evaporated rainwater, groundwater, and surface waters can deposit salts and silica from other locations on the surface of the soil. By causing rivers to flood, rainfall is indirectly responsible for the additions of new sediment to the soil on a flood plain. On the average, rainfall adds about 5 pounds of nitrogen per acre per year. That is about 6 kilograms per hectare per year. Minerals and other particles can be carried through and added to a developing soil or any soil by wind as wind blown or aeolian material. So now we are finished discussing all the processes that are involved in addition. So now let's discuss the process of losses. Most losses occur by leaching, which can remove water, salt, or silica, dissolve in water, and organic acids and other materials. Water moving through the soil dissolves certain minerals and transport them into the deeper layers of the soil. Fertilizers are relatively soluble, and many, such as the nitrogen and potassium fertilizers, are readily lost by leaching, either by natural rainfall or by irrigation water. So with that, long-term use of fertilizers that are based on ammonium may cause acidity, and it can contribute to the loss of carbonates in some areas. Another process that belongs to losses is erosion. Erosion removes particles such as humus, clay, and silt from the surface of the soil. And such losses can be serious because the material loss is usually the most productive part of the soil profile, which is the topsoil. We also have evaporation and transpiration as part of the losses. So these processes cause the soil to lose water that is used by microorganisms and vegetation. Another form of losses is the decomposition. Decomposition by microbes can remove organic matter from the soil. Other forms of losses are the grazing and harvesting by animals and humans. So the removal of the plant material through grazing and harvesting can cause nutrient losses and also organic matter losses from the soil. Moving on, as oxygen is released into the atmosphere by growing plants, Carbon dioxide is consumed by growing plants, but lost to the soil as fresh organic matter decays. And when soil is wet, 
nitrogen can be changed to a gas and lost to the atmosphere. So we have here loss of organic matter and loss of nitrogen. Another is the loss of oxygen. So we are now finished in discussing all the forming, soil forming processes, such as the transformation, translocation, addition, and losses. Now, let me discuss some specific soil forming processes. So all soils are created by the various horizon development, uh, development processes of additions, transformations, translocations, and losses. But it is the soil forming or the pedogenic process that determines the kind of soil that is ultimately formed. So an example is the process of laterization. This process is a pedogenic process that removes silica instead of the sesky oxides. When you say sesky oxides, those are the collective term for aluminum and iron oxides from the upper layers and thereby leaving sesky oxides to concentrate in the solume. So this process of laterization occurs in the hot, rainy tropics where chemical weathering proceeds at a rapid rate. The product of this process are the deep red to bright orange red soils of the tropics. So another process is the process of calcification which is the process of precipitation and accumulation of calcium carbonate in some part of the profile. The B-horizon of the soil, which is the soil layer usually below the top soil, is enriched with calcium carbonate precipitated from water moving downward through the soil or upward by capillary action of the water from below. And this process is common in warm, semi-arid environments, usually under grassland vegetation. So you can notice the whitish color of the bee horizon here. That is the product of calcification. We also have what we call salinization. It is the process of accumulation of salts such as sulfates and chlorides of calcium, magnesium, sodium, and potassium in soils in the form of salty or salic horizon. This process is similar to calcification, but differs in that the soil deposits occur at or very near the soil surface. And this process is quite common in arid and semi-arid regions. So this is an example. You can easily notice the salts on the soil surface. Another process we have is podzalization. It is a process of soil formation resulting in the formation of podzols. And when you say podzol, it is a lich soil formed mainly in cool, humid climates. And this process is the opposite of calcification. Since calcification tends to concentrate calcium in the lower part of the bee horizon, whereas potcellization leaches the entire solume of calcium carbonate. This process creates a sublayer in the A horizon that is white gray in color and composed of silica sand, as you can see in the example soil profile. Uh, this process usually occurs in cool and moist climates under fine forests. Another process we have is the glazation. It is a process of soil formation resulting in the development of glay horizon in the lower part of the soil profile just above the parent material due to poor drainage condition. 
So this process involves the accumulation of organic matter in the upper layers of the soil. While in lower horizons, mineral layers are stained blue-gray because of the chemical reduction of iron. As you can see, you have a um, relatively darker color of the upper layers of the soil that is because of the accumulation of organic matter. And because of the chemical reduction of iron, you can see that the lower horizons have a color of blue-gray. So now we are finished discussing all the soil forming processes. We have the forming soil forming processes such as the transformation, translocation, additions, and losses. We also discuss some of the specific soil forming processes. So thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe for the upcoming new review videos. Thank you very much.